Over 1 million cinema lovers have already subscribed to Film Companion. What are you waiting for? Hit the bell icon and join our film family. For the past decade, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has neatly packaged and commodified the future, turning it into a valuable piece of cinematic real estate. Take each new MCU installment, in which the end credit scenes brim over with promises of what comes next. Or even the 2021 TV show Loki, in which the finale's big reveal was the introduction of a Marvel villain who wasn't even scheduled to appear in the movies until 2023. Last year, with Spider-Man No Way Home, the MCU dipped back into the past, mining the swell of nostalgia-induced emotion with the return of familiar villains and beloved heroes. Now, in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Sam Raimi's propulsive, visually stunning and deeply sad follow-up to Doctor Strange, the MCU sprawls dizzyingly sideways into alternate timelines and parallel universes before settling into a more intimate, personal story of self-doubt and self-reflection about the choices we make and the alternatives we're haunted by. As is inevitable in any movie that deals with travel, the biggest journeys this film eventually undertakes are inward. You can travel across the furthest reaches of the multiverse, it suggests, but if left unchecked, patterns of loneliness and isolation will follow wherever you go. Many of Raimi's films deal with characters who either wield enormous power, desire to, or find it wielded against them. Variations of this theme recur in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, in which Doctor Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, initially teams up with Elizabeth Olsen's The Scarlet Witch to protect young multiversal traveller America Chavez, played by an endearing Sochi Gomez. What follows is an adventure that's grand in scope and sweeping in emotion. The madness in the film's title not only describing the wild thrill ride that it becomes, but also the ways in which the character's grief pushes them to the brink of insanity. Bringing characters face to face with alternate versions of themselves across the multiverse gives them a chance to discover their limitless potential, but also the depths of their failures. Some of Strange's laser-focused arrogance may have melted into altruism over the course of his MCU run so far, but the film reveals he simply traded his fierce drive to be the best surgeon for the feverish desire to be the best sorcerer. He's always had a bit of a god complex. A cheeky, if on the nose gag early in the film sees him turn water into wine. But Multiverse of Madness depicts the painfully human void he's crafted this persona around, which all the power in the world can't make up for. That the Scarlet Witch gives in to her darker impulses despite her WandaVision arc doesn't feel like a retread of past mistakes. Instead, it underscores how grief can persist and how trauma can remain unresolved. Elizabeth Olsen is the film's standout performer, walking the tightrope between the way love can endure, but also curdle into something bitter and ugly, rendering a person unrecognizable in their quest for it. That's not to say the film isn't fun, though Raimi's strength as a storyteller here lies in the way he tinkers with the MCU formula, opting to make some of the film's most comedic moments also some of its most heartbreaking. He'll show characters so content and at peace, the sense of their fragile world being shattered becomes acute in its inevitability. He'll build dazzling, intricate CGI-enhanced illusions, then reveal that the cruelest deceptions are the ones we've tricked ourselves into believing. He'll stage brutal, bloody battles in keeping with MCU formula, but then follow them up with scenes that reveal how the act of being vulnerable is often so much harder than mindless brawling. And in a franchise that has a poor track record with romance, he crafts a love story that reaches beyond the constraints of time or spatial location. Remy also brings his flair for horror to the MCU, delivering schlock in scenes in which the lights go out and candles flicker ominously. And the director expertly employs his few jump scares, though the spectres that haunt most of the characters in this film are of the more persistent, existential kind. In Remy's hands, the MCU landscape is also the most vibrantly alive and tactile it's been in a while. A scene in which the score is visually depicted on screen during a fight, with the discordant notes converted into weapons, is thrillingly inventive, though a good old-fashioned fistfight between two magic users is just as satisfying. Cross-cutting between different characters at pivotal moments builds suspense, while match cuts between two versions of the same character across the multiverse underline the tragedy that only one of them has endured. In the multiverse, dreams aren't visions to aspire to, but cruel glimpses of everything the characters can't have. Multiverse of Madness leans heavily on MCU history, revisiting the themes of control explored in the first Doctor Strange, the idea of fate in the tragic Infinity War saga, and Wanda Maximoff's wrenching WandaVision trajectory. Long-time fans will find their patience rewarded, while those who aren't as clued into the franchise will understandably be put off by the amount of homework and backstory this film requires, a problem that's set to recur as the MCU becomes increasingly self-referential. Even so, 
At the heart of this film is a straightforward story about the cost of happiness and the nature of sacrifice. In a sprawling multiverse that repeatedly reminds its characters how minuscule their lives are, it simultaneously reminds them how each of their choices matter. And in a movie with magic spells and flying capes, it lets this define what makes them heroic. <laughs>